Hello. Hi. How we, are you? We just recorded five minutes of this video previously. I didn't have the uh, the door recording. So here we are no. again. Take two. Here we are doing it all again. It's all my fault. I'm getting old. Uh, um, Speaking of old. Yes. Nice segue. <laughs> Thanks. Brilliant. Some vintage gear. Vintage gear. I love vintage gear. You love vintage gear. What is this rod? This is my Yamaha GP50. It's 31 years old, maybe now. I bought it brand new um, back then. It's the Yamaha SPX90, but designed for guitar. Um, in addition to the time and pitch-based and modulation algorithms, it had 10 cheesy distortion <laughs> settings you could dial in. <laughs> digital distortion. cheesy digital distortions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Gorgeous. Which were virtually unusable. You could you could drive use it to drive a, an amp that's already on the edge a little bit. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but um, I used to use it. Money for reverbs, and yep. the early reflection reverbs are quite nice, and the gated reverbs are really nice. Oh, sweet. Um, but delays and pitches. Delay times, I think you you could have a, you can have as long as you want, so long as it was half a second. Right. Maximum. <laughs> so 500 milliseconds is, uh, is what it would max out. To. Yeah, okay. So you could set up some stereo ping pong delays if you want. We're going to run through some, um, some chorus style or pitch delays. Yep. Um, pitch algorithms. Uh, just to give you an idea of, of how this can give you some really nice stereo separation. If you've got a stereo rig or using it as stereo after effects as well. And for those of you freaking out at home that I've got a Marshall head sitting on it, Rod assures me that it will be fine. Yeah, yeah. This Look, it's for years I, I used to sit it underneath the Marshall 100 watt head and, and it bounced around a number of stages. <laughs> and, and, and because we are the pedal Picassos, you're going to be able to step through. Matt's going to step through the patches. I'm not even going to use it like a pedal. I'm just going to click it with my hand. Yeah. Rod's still got the original 30-year-old pedal that plugs yep. in the back of it. Yep. Yeah. There was two. I had that one to advance the patches and another one to select bypass. Good to see you didn't get the 30 years worth of... No, there's 30 years worth of stages in there. Please use the tone brush. <laughs> I actually stole this from our friend Mason Marigella. So, but if you're looking for your tone brush... Here it is. <laughs> um, that's not going to brush away 30 years of stage scum. Uh, I don't yeah. think so. I think there's a fair bit of spit in there too. There might be some contraband as well, but let's not go into that. All right. Everyone <laughs> complains that we talk too much. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> What's first? Um, okay. So this is pitch C. So this is um, giving you the ability to adjust the pitch um, of your signal, send it to the left-hand side of the spectrum and to the right-hand side of the spectrum and then leave the center signal unaffected. So you're making a chorus? Yes. By so you're shifting? Yes. You, right, can, you, can, you can adjust it in slight margins. So... so that's pretty neat. It's a nice a great chorus. chorus. Yeah. So is it drifting or is it just three separate slightly pitch shifted pitches? Yeah, three slightly. So your original tone, yeah. unaffected, and then to the left. But it's, it's not crossing back over its original tone and go back at the, they're just stationary pitch shifted. Yeah. Wow. Shifted down by eight cents, shifted up by eight cents. And you can do some slight time shifting as well. Yeah. So I time shift some of these just to just to broaden the stereo image and you get, get an idea. Let's go to the next one. Which I think click click, so this is probably the same one, and I've just named it Love Pitch. Don't oh. know why, because I love it. Probably because. Cool. That's brilliant. If you give me a high five, we can go to the next <laughs> patch. <laughs> and we didn't. Oh, yeah. no, we did. Yes, we did. Oh. Let's go back. Yeah. Yes, because this one, so I've actually named it with the um, the delay on it. So this is yep. 30 second milliseconds, 30 milliseconds. And the mix sounds slightly down on the, the last one. Advance to the next one, which is 80 milliseconds. So a bit more of a slap back on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Which is pretty cool. 
Yeah. I like that. Yeah. What's what's next? Of course, we're going through the Iridium. Um, we should have mentioned that before. Yeah. So we're, we're going from this guitar into the Strymon Iridium, out into the GEP50, then stereo outs into the door. Yeah. Um, so you could take that those pitch settings and you could bend them even more and give yourself uh, a full tone above, a semitone above, yep. a third above, a fifth above, an octave or whatever. Yep. Um, and years ago, Steve Vai, uh, and I, he probably used an eventide for this type of effect, but yep. it, it was... Um, that type of weird, cheesy effect. And that's just done by adding adding fifth and octaves and then delaying them slightly. Yep. So you've got that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Steve Vai has shrunk himself and is hiding in the rack behind yeah. me. Sweet. That's Just glorious. Fun for noodling. Next? Yes. What's this next one? It could be. Just more chorus. Next one. Well, hopefully we haven't infringed copyright too much. That sounds great. But yeah, a long delay. And stereo. With some modulation? I don't know, it sounds uh, like. Probably. Going into the parameters, it's just got um, 407 second millisecond, 407 millisecond delay on the left channel with feedback at 13%, 406. So slightly different on the right channel, um, which might be giving you a little bit of that overlap. Yeah. Yeah. Don't hide the screen with your hand. We Sorry. Sorry about that. Did I do that? <laughs> oh, God. I'll fix it in post by chopping God. your fucking fingers off. Makeup. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that sounds good. Can you play some more on that one? Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. All right, next one. Next one. Um, this is an early reflection, so. I think we've got some digital distortion in there. <laughs> and we have. Let's tame that. But it's an early room reflection in there, which nearly sounds like a cardboard box. Right. You can adjust the, the tone of that early reverb, and it's a plate. So you can adjust um, from a reverse and a random hall and plate, I would suggest. Sorry, in, in, in the way this, but they were basic, but they gave you options. Let's go on to the next one. Oh, and if you were struggling, if you needed to record some bass, <laughs> and you were really struggling. <laughs> but if you were really struggling, because it starts to wobble really badly. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it sounds like your worst out of tune, poor action, bass that's been in the cupboard for give 70 it, years. Give us a slight walking bass line on that so we can get a good feel for it. It's not one you'd want to use, but in a pinch, you, you've got to put some bass down somewhere. And that's the only thing you've got. You still wouldn't <laughs> use it. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I like what this could do for back in the day, 30 years on. Oh. All right, play that now. I just want to hear how well it tracks. Now, bear in mind, it hasn't got its other signal mixed in. It doesn't have its original signal mixed in. Is there a way to mix the original signal back in, or is that yeah. all it does? Yeah. Now, now, just now play us a little bit. Do I have to? Yes. 
It's a 30-year-old pitch shifter. It's doing fine. Don't you listen to Rod. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Little Yamaha, what is it, GP50. You're doing great. Yes. Next. Look, I think that's all. Just um, what I'm going to do now is I'm, I've turned the Iridium off, so this is just pure signal from okay. this rack unit. Right. I'm going to get Rod to play, and then I'm going to reamp it okay. in Logic after this. And see what happens, uh, yeah. Give us, give us a crack. <laughs> Done. That's the Yamaha GP50, folks. It's well and truly 30 years old. Absolute beast. Still got the original manual. Stereo out. Mm. Stereo in. No, mono in. Mono in, stereo oh. out. <laughs> it's got an effects loop. Yeah, you can go in the front or go in the back. So we're going in the back at the moment. Right. Hasn't got stereo in. Reverbs, delays, mm. modulations, and pitch. Yeah. If you wanted a and, tuner. And distortion. There's a tuner out on there as well. Oh, yeah, good. <laughs> I think everyone's already tuned out. Um, Thanks. Yeah, no one's got this far. If That's you've still got a GP50, then you're probably as old as I am. You absolutely <laughs> need to show us if you've got a GP50 and send us a sound clip or something. Our email address is in the description of the video. Yeah. You definitely need to show us because it's pretty cool. Yeah. And if you've got some other vintage gear, let us know. Yeah, and let us know what we should be looking at. So Please subscribe. Do that. Yeah. Or your mother will yell at you. Yeah. Done. Bye. See you, bye.